Hi, this is Sieg Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In previous videos, we have learned about time interval error, often abbreviated as TIE, and we also explored phase noise plots. The question we will now address is, how are TIE and phase noise plots related? Recall that any point on a phase noise plot is a representation of the phase power at a given frequency offset from the carrier. In the previous video, I simplified things by having each specific tie value of 1 picosecond, 4 picoseconds, or a half a picosecond to be occurring at a fixed frequency of a few hertz so that I could do some basic animations of the clock edges. In reality, though, the phase power at a given frequency is the combination of the power of all the edges that occur at that frequency. For example, the Fourier component corresponding to a frequency of 5 hertz may sometimes have its tie amplitude be 15 picoseconds or 3 picoseconds, or some other value, not just the 4 picoseconds I used in the previous video. The combination of all of these phase power components that are occurring at a frequency of 5 hertz are what determine the power level displayed on a phase noise plot at 5 hertz. Actually, though, 5 hertz is not a realistic number for us to be considering when discussing phase noise plots because most of the phase power is concentrated near the carrier, not near DC, such as 1 hertz or 5 hertz. In my example that had a 10 megahertz carrier, noise power would be concentrated much more in the frequencies near 10 megahertz, such as 10 megahertz plus 5 hertz, or 10 megahertz plus 1 kilohertz, and so forth. In other words, most phase noise will be at offsets closer to 10 megahertz, as opposed to close to DC, which of course is 0 hertz. But the basic concept I displayed graphically still applies, even when the measured phase power is from a 10 point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000005 megahertz clock edge. We combine all of the phase power components at 10.000005 megahertz, which is the same as saying we combine all of the phase power components that are at a 5 hertz offset from the carrier. And these are the values that are graphed in the phase noise plot. Phase noise plots tend to be reasonably smooth. So what does it mean when we see narrow humps that clearly are excursions from the random noise that creates the reasonably smooth portion of the phase noise plots? It means that there is a phase noise source that is not random. In other words, there is a deterministic source of phase noise. We call these deterministic excursions spurs. Spurs are often the result of interference from nearby RF clock sources, which may be a wire carrying a clock nearby, or even RF signals generated by electrical equipment. To demonstrate this, I made a phase noise plot of a 156.2 MHz clock, which we see here. We can see it is relatively smooth and monotonic. Note also that I placed a measurement marker at an offset of 31.25 MHz from the carrier, and the phase noise there is about negative 157 dBc per hertz or so. What if I introduce a 125 MHz clock that is so close to the 156.25 MHz clock that crosstalk occurs. The carrier clock I am measuring is still 156.25 MHz, and the nearby clock that is interfering is the 125 MHz clock. When crosstalk occurs, 
there will be a harmonic at the difference between the two clock frequencies. Therefore, we expect a spur to occur at 31.25 MHz offset from the carrier. Now we know why I put the marker there at 31.25 MHz. And here is the phase noise plot of the 156.25 MHz carrier I took after introducing the 125 MHz clock that is causing crosstalk. Sure enough, we see a very large spur occurring exactly where we expected it, at the 31.25 MHz offset from the carrier. This spur is so large, the phase noise at that offset is over 100 dBc per hertz higher than when there is no 125 MHz clock interfering with the 156.25 MHz clock. That is not random noise. Okay, time to wrap up this video. In the next videos, we are going to bring together the various ideas we presented in this and previous videos to finally learn how this is all used to calculate one of the most important parameters we deal with in timing. What parameter would that be, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. That parameter is jitter.